Hello and welcome to stream number 91 in the series where I'm programming a game uh, live on Twitch from scratch, although we have some changes to announce to that. Um, so no, uh, well, if you looked at Twitter, you already know what I'm going to say, but if not, no, the game is not canceled. No, I am not stopping. Um, but um, I want to take a moment to explain exactly what's going on here. So when I started this project a year ago, the idea was I wanted to write an NES game. And then I also decided I wanted to help people learn about what's involved in writing an NES game. And, and that's evolved into um, you know, a number of things, including the Zero Pages series, um, which uh, people really like because they're pretty short and very focused. And I, can, I plan on continuing to do that. Um, focusing on um, a series of videos on the specific instructions as sort of like a spin-off of episode three and then in episode four um, you know starting starting off with uh, you know your first NES um, uh, project not even a game but just like getting bootstrapping your code essentially um, so I'm gonna keep doing that um, but what I discovered over the past year is, although we have uh, a few people who are on the streams pretty regularly, which is great, and I, and I uh, you know, and I've spoken to them while on stream uh, and recording a number of times. Um, so if you've watched the videos, you know who I'm talking about. Um, as as great as that is, and as good as the interaction is with those people, and and as much as I want to continue to do that, I also want to finish the game. Uh, in a relatively short period of time and, and doing the live streaming portion of this, um, while it was meant to motivate me to, um, you know, guarantee that I was going to program at least twice a week for the game at this point is actually having the opposite effect of limiting me to only working on the game twice a week, which, you know, if I can find more time, I really want to be able to do that. And even things like starting earlier, like starting, um, you know, uh, in, in the early evening and, and not going to bed late because I'm up, uh, for, you know, three or four hours talking about this stuff. Um, so the plan is, and then stream every day. Yes. Um, the plan is to, um, continue to do the stream once a week, make that a much shorter stream where I will be covering specific topics that have come up during the past week, um, as I post the recordings of the development, I'll continue to record the development and, and sort of narrate through what I'm doing, um, but not live. Uh, the live streams will be still some coding, but also um, more of a Q&A, more of a, you know, uh, kind of continuing to uh, ensure that everybody um, gets to ask their questions and make requests in terms of things like the zero pages and um, and just continue this um, because I, I do like the live streaming. I, I really do um, enjoy being on live, but um, if I want to finish this game anytime soon, um, then I really need to um, pick up the pace. So um, that's the plan. And, um, you know, the, I, I still want to post at least two videos a week on YouTube of, rec uh, of the recordings of the programming sessions. Eventually, as I kind of get my stride, uh, we'll see how many sessions I, I actually post. And uh, I'll uh, likely do a summary of what was developed at the beginning of the streams on Thursday so that we can kind of do a recap and then answer any questions that come up or did come up um, you know in comments and stuff um, just to uh, just to keep that sort of cohesiveness that we have right now with the, the live streams and the videos on YouTube but you know almost at 750 subscribers on YouTube which is really awesome um, and it just continues to grow and I'm excited that people really enjoy what's happening and are excited about this idea and excited about the NES so um, gonna keep going and uh, I'm not going anywhere but I just wanted to kind of make that announcement and let people know what's going on so uh, so that they could you know voice their opinions and also uh, not be surprised by the change suddenly so this will be the the last of the regular sort of longer programming sessions 
hopefully we'll wrap up the attribute changes that had to be made as a result of switching to the 16 by 16 meta tiles. Um, and then we'll get the, um, the enemy spawning properly. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then I'll start with what I said, I'll start doing more programming sessions, sort of, uh, you know, recorded, um, in, um, uh, I don't know what offline and then, and then, um, do a live stream on Thursdays to answer questions and a recap and, and all that good stuff. So enough of me yakking about that. Let's get into where we are here. So when we left off last time, we had fixed the loading of the level as it scrolled, which was excellent. I was very excited about that. And, um, and so we got to the point where, um, the enemies seem to be spawning in a in a weird sort of way. Um, uh, question on the chat. So one live stream, but more videos each week. Um, I'm planning to do to start off with the same number of videos each week. So two videos plus the live stream, which I'll record. Um, and again, make that more about uh, the live aspect of it. So like we were having a conversation before I started recording about some some things related to development outside of, um, you know, the project. I'm okay. I'll, I'll start including that kind of stuff in the content of the Thursday recordings. But I'll also do a recap of the changes that were made on the other videos that I've posted since then. Um, kind of summarizing why I made the change, what pitfalls we hit, um, which will all still be recorded in the longer videos. But, you know, people always talk about the, uh, the YouTube algorithm and, and favoring sort of shorter videos and stuff like that. And, um, and, and while some of that is, um, you know, obviously YouTube themselves, um, tailoring the, the algorithm. The other part of it is that people just like shorter videos. They don't want to sit and watch me program for four hours. Um, and you know, I, I get that. And I've, I've talked about handmade hero, which is a series that does the same thing for PC programming. And, um, you know, when the series started, I watched all the videos all the way through. Um, but as it's progressed and he's done, you know, uh, many hundreds of videos now, I'm pretty sure that he's up to some, somewhere in the four hundreds, maybe, um, it's just harder and harder to watch and pick up and leave off because there's so much content and, um, and that's not, you know, he, he specifically focused on being as detailed as possible. And while I, um, certainly want to provide the detail, um, I don't know that people will necessarily get as much out of seeing every single detail as they will being able to have that at their disposal if they want to go back to it. Um, and then also the, the interaction and the live conversation and discussion where you guys can ask questions and, um, and I can, you know, help anybody who has any questions about NES programming or programming in general, um, where, where possible. Um, so yeah, so going back to this, we have the scrolling loading. The enemies are working in a wonky sort of way. The attribute stuff is, is totally wrong, um, because of the way that it worked previously. Um, yeah, zero pages is meant for people who, who are totally new to NES programming or even lower level programming, um, you know, in assembly language. Um, so when we left off here, we were kind of fixing the scrolling code, uh, which was broken and now that's okay. But the attribute, um, changes stuff, uh, was, was not. And part of the reason I kind of left it was because I was, we were, we were pretty far through the stream and I was kind of, uh, exhausted for the evening and, uh, not able to think through the the problems there. So let's talk about that. So the way that the current scrolling code works is we are loading and storing our um, tile data into, uh, we have an area in memory. Where is that? Called new tiles. And new tiles holds exactly what it sounds like. It's the new tiles that we want to load into um, the background. And so 
we we update new tiles to have all the information um, and then we are going through and updating the row that is next to be updated with uh, this repeat 30 store of 32 tiles um, and we only do that uh, based on if we loaded a new tile uh, or a new row into this new tiles memory when we are in our um, NMI and so that all worked fine. The next part that's not working though is we are not loading. We have a buffer that holds the entire attribute table and sort of like a shadow buffer. Um, and uh, that's not being updated properly. Now, the way that it was working previously, we had our 32 by 32 meta tiles. So, we were just updating the whole byte with, well, we were doing a couple things, right? We were updating a whole byte of the attribute table in one case. Um, and then we were in another case updating half a byte in one uh, and half a byte in another. Um, and we were flipping back and forth and that's because of that half, um, that half, meta tile that we had at the bottom that was only 16 long. So that problem should be somewhat simplified because now we're just updating these one by one. Um, there's still the logic um, that has to deal with the fact that the bottom only has um, the two um, rows of meta tiles instead of uh, sorry the one row of meta tiles instead of the two um, and there's the you know the byte is still there but up, um, uh, updating that byte at the bottom doesn't um, do anything right we got to update just this part so I'm kind of dreading going back into this because this was such a pain going in in the first place that I was so happy when it was done and working um, all right, so let's take a look at this. So the attribute index is next man to tile attribute. So we're loading. I wonder if we can. I wonder if we can simplify this a little bit because what we were doing before was we were processing the row and the meta tile separately because the logic was fairly different. But now really the, the logic isn't that much different. It's more so because yeah. Hmm. The only, the only thing that's really different is the fact that we are potentially shifting or not shifting the lower bytes. Um, so, um, MDTA UK, you, you were talking about the, um, the swapping of the memory addresses and, and updating uh, the background memory. Now, uh, to be clear in this, I'm not actually doing the updates to the background. Um, I am, so in the in the level load code, it is loading the entire screen in two parts. It first loads the tiles and then it loads the attributes. In this, it's loading the information into a buffer that's then used to update the PPU memory um, when it's time to redraw the screen. And so, um, the, the difference here is that we're updating RAM. We're not actually updating the background. So there's no penalty for switching back and forth here. Um, and in fact, we may actually be better off by updating the attribute buffer in memory here now, uh, because now we don't have to reload the, the row memory, 
um, uh, the content of the row multiple times. So let's see. So this gives us our, if we load the row mem, we don't have to do the translation on it for the attribute buffer uh, because we have it aligned by palettes. So we, Meta tile one maps to palette one. Um, love the meta tile value. For, um, so what we could do? Let me think about this for a second. We're we're gonna increment y, right? We're gonna load this, and then we're gonna increment. Oh, no, we're doing two stores here. So the meta tile, let me think about that for a second. So we have two, two tiles, but one attribute update. That's actually not bad. Let's see. So can I just do, so I've loaded that. And then I want to store that into attribute buffer. Um, well, X, ha what does X have in it right now? X is, oh, for the, met the lookup. Let's do this. We can load X with attribute index and then store it, store A into that and then increment attribute index. And then we do our A to X and okay, so let's see. The only thing that's missing from this is um, uh, use the meta tile to update the attribute buffer. Update the attribute buffer. Uh, At the, uh, with the correct palette value. Um, let's see, you mentioned the, if you were to say strip out the old code and do the buffer from scratch, you could add a tile and its attribute one by one. Um, yeah, so if I if I started with, um, that's a good question. So um, the question was if I, if I had started the load level code over again and wanted to, could I, um, could I eliminate the storing of the background memory and the attribute buffer memory being done in two pieces and instead just make it be done, uh, just put it into memory and then have the memory be used to do the update? Um, yeah, I could, um, I believe, I believe that's what we're doing in here, in fact, is that we're just doing... So we put the location into 2006 that we want to write, and then we store our 2007 values. Um, actually, and then I force the attribute location. So technically... Technically, oh, okay, all right. So part of this is, yes, so so to your question before, yes, we could, if we loaded up a buffer in memory, we could create a buffer that holds exactly the background and the attribute memory in a, in a 1K buffer, and then just write the whole thing out in a series of... Um, 1024 updates to 2007 that's totally doable um if it needed to get that to that point if loading levels became so complex that it was too slow the way we're doing it we we could probably be more efficient that way um one thing to keep in mind is that we are updating only a row of memory here and then we're updating for better or for worse the entire attribute buffer um just because previously updating the attribute buffer 
um, selectively was more complicated than I wanted to do and we had enough time that just dumping the entire attribute buffer into the uh, PPU attribute buffer was fine. It didn't impact performance at all. If we, with this scheme, we actually have the potential to gain some performance benefit in the NMI if we if we run out of time um, because we're doing too much in here. Um, we can reduce the number of writes. So like we still need to write these 32 bytes for the tiles, but we don't necessarily have to rewrite all 64 attribute um, bytes. So we, we might save some time there by writing only eight bytes instead of, um, instead of, uh, writing the whole, um, 64. Um, but we wouldn't be able to do a full just 1024 write because we're not updating the entire background and the attribute buffer, um, when we do the update in the scrolling process here. So, uh, good question. Uh, it's still still not exactly the reason, uh, still not something we would necessarily do. Um, uh, so let's see. Okay, so we're loading the attribute index. We're storing the buffer value at the index. And then, okay, so we don't want to do exactly that. Um, let me think about this for a second. So... Um, depending on where we are, we either want to shift and or, or just simply mask. Well, we want to, sh we either want to mask and or, or shift, mask, shift and or. Um, so depending on what part of the byte we're updating, we always want to mask out these pre-existing, um, values, whichever side we're on, um, but we may or may not need to shift. So the lower, the lower, um, this is the lower right, lower left, um, upper right, upper left, and this is zero and this is um, seven, right? And so, um, depending on which part we're updating, we need to shift um, and mask the di a different part. So, um, one of the things that we had done was we were using, I think we were calculating the state based on, um, we, our state was essentially the mask that we were using, which was a nice way of doing it because then kind of did double duty. Um, You only need to update the buffer, the, the attribute table when it's scrolled. Um, yes, because you uh, you only need to update the tiles um, when you've scrolled a certain distance. So it's not doing it every frame. It's doing it every eight, every, um, it's doing it every, that's a good point. It's doing it every, it would have to do the attribute update every 16 pixels, not every eight pixels. Um, so this is, potentially a redundant way of doing it. We'd be updating the RAM extra, but it might actually be simpler to do it that way. And I'm, I'm all for simpler. Um, so let's see. Um, and if it turns out that we're wasting too much time there, we can make it more efficient and only do the update every, every, every other, um, every other uh, eight pixels where we are um, actually switching to a new meta tile. Use the meta tile to update the attribute buffer with the correct palette value. So we need to know, I need to know what I can eliminate from here. Um, so this is potentially all gone. Um, But let's see here, where was our, so that's attribute mode. So we can use that for the same purpose here. Um, so we load that and then, push A, 
onto the stack for a moment. Let's load attribute mode. Compare it with F0. Um, so F0 would mean we are updating the lower um, the lower nibble and 0F would be the upper nibble. I'll have to get rid of the um, or call it something different instead of split and no split but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. So compare it with F0, so we're doing the lower nibble, which is the lower left and lower right. Um, and uh, branch if not equal to the next label, otherwise we're here. So if we're updating the lower nibble, what we wanna do is we wanna load A, attribute buffer, attribute, uh, So load the current value of that in and then end it with attribute mode uh, to mask the value. And then, let's see. You know what, we may just end up needing to, instead of pushing it, let's um, sort into temp which I don't believe is used here for anything. It's not, okay. So we're gonna store it instead of pushing it because I need to, and I need to or it back in. Um, so attribute mode is load a this, okay, so load the attribute index, load the buffer, the current buffer value. Um, we're going to then, mask it out so we get just the upper nibble set the way we want and then we're going to can we do that i gotta look back at the um instruction set because i don't remember um can i shift a, i think i could shift a variable yeah you can shift a memory value okay so let's do that. So I have temp set to what I want. Well, in this case, I don't need to, sh well, I do need to shift it by two bits, but um, SL temp, SL temp, um, and then, um, or a temp, and then store that back into temp. Right, because we're gonna we're taking the value of a, storing it into temp, then we're shifting that by two bits and oring it back over, so that'll give us the two lower nibbles or the lower nibble, the two lower bits sets, and then we store that back into temp. Um, and then we check the mo. Oh well, I don't want to. Uh, yeah, I do want to do that there, and then we're gonna load the attribute mode. We're gonna compare it, and we are going to. Load the attribute buffer, current value, and mask it against the attribute mode. Actually, I don't even know if we need to do that comparison here because the mask operation is the same regardless. So we're gonna load it, we're gonna and it against the mode, and then if the mode is different, then we have to shift it potentially, or wait, what are we shifting? We're shifting either we're shifting temp. So compare attribute. So move that there. Uh, compare it to F, uh, F0 branch if equal uh, to there. If it's 0F, then that means we need to shift temp four times because we want it to be in the upper nibble. 
and then we're going to or a that value and then store and then that's what we want to store into attribute buffer and then we increment the attribute index that actually seems right so let's let's talk this through and add appropriate comments because it seems like it works better um, yeah exactly right uh, don't forget to add the comments um, all right so uh, st uh, store temp for uh, use in the attribute buffer shift it by two bits to um, or against for the uh, full nibble I think it's actually with a Y, isn't it? Um, store the four bits back into temp. Grab the attribute index so we can pull the current attribute buffer value. Mask against the attribute mode, which uh, wipes the bits we don't care about, and then um, uh, oh, here, that's the problem. Uh, load a attribute buffer x and it, and then we can't do this. Well, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. By doing the AND and then the load A, we're wiping the result of that attribute um, AND. Um, here, story attempt two. Um, save the masked value. Load the, uh, check the attribute mode to see if we need to shift by four. Skip the shift if we masked out the lower nibble. Shift. And then um, load A with temp2 and then OR with temp and then store that. Um, grab the masked out value. Combine with the adjusted metatile index put that into the attribute um, buffer and then we increment our index and we're done um, and then we do our two tile let's see transfer a to x well that's not going to work anymore here we can do this push a here and then pull A. So we get A off of the stack there because we do need that original tile value. Um, I don't know what's faster to do the push and the pull or to do another reload. Um, well, let's look. I don't know that it matters, but let's, let's look. It's good to always do this um, as like a, an example. So here we're doing a load A with an indirect um, Indirect Y. So that's uh, five plus cycles for that. So if we do that twice, it can be up to you know 10, 10 more or more cycles. If we do a push A. Um, let's see how many cycles is that? It's three. So definitely faster to do three and four, so seven. So it's definitely gonna be a few cycles faster. I know it's early optimization, I know, I know. But it's more for, for the example of, of showing what you're looking for when you're doing it. I, I don't, I think pushing and pulling it on the stack uh, and off the stack is easier um, to, to deal with here. Um, here, um, pull the uh, metatile value back off the stack. Push this on to the stack for later. 
Yeah, no, it's true. You spend too much time fighting bugs that you've created by um, trying to be overly clever early on. Um, all right, so that's... I think that technically handles the attribute stuff. So, let's see. So, if I move this here... The only thing that we're not doing properly is um, adjusting the attribute index value, um, which, depending on the mode, either needs to be sub need uh, what 16 subtracted or 32 subtracted, because if we're updating the lower nibble, then we want to subtract only 16 to go back to the beginning of the same row to update the upper nibble. If we've already updated the upper nibble, then we want to go back to the previous row. So let's look at the um, load A, uh, what did I call that? Um, attribute mode, attribute mode. Compare it with F0. Um, so if we are updating the lower um, branch, if not equal to um, no, no, no. So if we're, this needs to be an if else, not just an if. Um, so compare, uh, branch if, let's see. So if it's not equal, let's just work through the logic and I'm thinking too far ahead. Um, compare this to F0, so we're at the lower nibble. So what we want to do is we want to load a attribute index, uh, set the carry, subtract 16, and store, store that back into attribute index, and then Update um, We can do that in one step so here at the end once we're done with whatever we're doing we can load the attribute attribute mode and uh, do an exclusive or against FF and then that back because if we have uh, <clears throat> if we have F0 right F0 and we uh, we do an exclusive or of FF it just flips and we do it again it flips back so it's just a handy way of flipping it back and forth um, and we don't have to worry about what the condition is it will just always flip back and forth accordingly um, all right, so if we have F0, then um, if we, no, if we have 0, wait a minute, if we have 0F, then we want to lo load yeah, so compare against 0F and jump, skip attributes. So once we're done updating the attribute index, oh, well, no, that's not going to work then. Sorry, I'm just kind of mentally debating my own decision here. Um, I'll just do this. It's probably better to just have it in both places and do the jump. Um, uh, so if it's not F0, then it's 0F, zero uh, which means we want to load the attribute index. So the carry, subtract, subtract 32. 
right? If it's 0F, then we only cared about the upper nibble, which means that we want to go to the next row, store that into attribute index, and then it's the same as this here. And then technically all this other code goes away. Uh, I'm not going to delete it yet. feels kind of scary that that is all gone and much simpler, but also good. Also good. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I, if I did that right. I am definitely a fan of simpler, so if this is simplified greatly by doing this, that is totally cool. All right, so it started off okay, it looked like, and then the character died, and let's see. And then everything broke. Uh, all right, well, I didn't expect that to work first time. Well, I hoped, I hoped it would have worked first time, but it did not. Um, let's see what I messed up. All right, we'll just step through this. And start with a good, good state. And all right, so we're at the next one. And this is all looking good there. And then we're going to load. All right, so it's A. We're going to push that onto the stack. I'm actually surprised at how many things are on the stack there, but okay. Um, so that we're stored into temp, which now has the value of one. And then we're going to shift it by two, and that will give us the value of four. And then we're going to store, we're going to or that. So we're going to get, uh, what? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Right, it, I was adjusting A, so uh, 4 and 1, and that gives us 5, and then we have 5 and temp. And then we're going to load the attribute index, um, and we're going to load the current value, which is 7C, which is, uh, let's take a look at that in the calculator to see what that actually looks like. So that is 1, 3, three and zero. All right, so, oh, you know what might be wrong? The attribute mode. Attribute mode might be in, well, I don't know if that would totally break it, but it certainly wouldn't help if it was backwards. Um, all right, so, and uh, attribute mode, so we're gonna get rid of the lower nibble there, so we'll just get, Wait, what was it? Oh, okay, no, so we have C, so we keep the lower nibble. Okay, so um, store that into temp two. So now it's C. Uh, we're gonna load that again. We're gonna compare it to F0, which it's not. So temp, oh, you know what we're not taking into account? I, that, I know what the problem is. We're not taking into account the, um, the half row at the bottom which means we would have to jump. Okay, that's that's fine, but um, okay, so um, we have five in here, so we're gonna shift it four times, and we now have a five zero, and then we're gonna load A, and we're gonna have C, and we're gonna have five C, right? Five C, store that back, increment, attribute index, gives us the next value. And we're gonna pull one back off the stack and transfer it to X. We're gonna have the meta tile lookup and that gives us our indexes into the actual tiles. We know that part is all working. It's the it's the attribute stuff that seems wrong. So that's interesting because it looked like it was actually pretty close. Um, let me 
put the breakpoint here so we get one cycle through. Interesting, so that wiped out the entire... Why did that wipe out the entire attribute buffer? Let's see, next meta tile. I mean, we're only doing it once per two tiles and we are doing that eight times. So that should be okay. Let's do this just for just for kicks. Um, let's not update here. Let's see if this yields similar result or if something else got broken by this change and it's just having a negative impact on the attribute buffers as well. Um, okay, no, so that's good. So the, the attribute buffer is still wrong. Um, but it didn't totally blank out the screen, so that's good. Um, let's fix a couple things. Uh, attribute mode, when we start, I don't remember what the state is set to. Alright, so we are... Before we're done with the load of the level, we're loading in split. Um, these names are no longer as descriptively correct as I want them to be. So this would be, uh, can we, let's see, can I do a rename type thing? No. Um, all right, so this is, this is lower nibble, lower nib, upper nib. Um, so attribute mode. Um, and what we want to do is we want to update the upper nib to start because that is the um, bottom of the screen. Right? So let's see. I don't think this code is actually being invoked anywhere anymore. Increment meta tile sub row, load A, attribute mode, compare. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think I need to do this anymore. Branch not equal check for new meta tile row. I think this can go away. or at least partially go away. And I don't think it needs to be... Except that this is all... This is all code that shouldn't even be called anymore. What is this? Done with objects, increment, metatile, sub row. This is all scrolling stuff. Entropy buffer X. Um, hmm. Is it actually even calling this anymore? Looks like it should be, but I don't know that that's actually what I want anymore. Um, check for attribute. Where is that? Um, what's this? Um, okay. So the question is, is it actually calling that? Doesn't appear to be. Okay. Well, that's good because I didn't think it should be. Um, so 
still not sure where it's adding the op the objects to the background, but um, all right, so. It's not calling that. Load X enemy index, check for objects, check next byte, object confirmed, check ob jump check objects, done with objects, jump skip row process. So it's uh, increment meta tile, branch of equal meta tile sub row. And then branch of new meta tile row. I think I just want to skip over all that. Check for new meta tile row. We'll clean up this code and remove the stuff that's no longer used. Um, 1279. But um, I just want to kind of make sense of what we're doing here. Uh, next meta tile. Oh, yeah, so this is all. Uh, it doesn't really matter anymore since that's not called. is really going to give me each one separately. <laughs> um, fine. Uh, split. Processing this, um, so let's. Oh, the breakpoint got shifted. So let's let's see. That's still messing with stuff. Um, still don't understand where. it out up at the top for add map object what's calling that because I didn't I don't remember I don't want those to spawn right now and I don't remember calling it in multiple places uh, where's my call stack oh it's actually doing it yeah okay Um, how is that relative to the, the actual map? I think it's too, too soon, but I don't remember what I did. Yeah, it's too soon. Um, all right, so, but why, why is it even... Wait, why is it even doing that process flyby? Why are those getting added? Um, it's weird. Tiny enemy check bullet collision. I was calling this one process flyby. Let's restart the game for a second here. Is there... That's weird.
fly by. So, I mean, it makes sense that it's being called by the flyby, but what's adding that? Unless it's some sort of other bug. Um, all right, I guess it's not worth here, just for now, we'll do that and just want to kind of remove weirdness from the code. <laughs> it's still adding stuff. Um, okay. That's strange. Okay. I will leave that alone for now. So the attribute buffer is what at the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, so the first thing that we're updating is attribute index, what, 38? So 38 is this. So think about this so this is the last row and it should then be masking with the 0 F so what's attribute mode sent to set to um, attribute mode is set to 0 F so that's actually correct um, hmm except that the attribute index being 0 F is or at 38 is dumb because we are updating this part here, which has the, all the fives. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's this one that's eight. So, uh, and the reason that that is dumb is because, or that we're updating that row. That that might explain what's happening. Um, we want to update, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see, um, we want to update this row here. If we look at the uh, palette information, palette one um, and palette, f uh, is that right? Let's see, so five gives you um, palette two and or is it palette one and palette one, right? <sighs> yeah, palette one and palette one. So that's this palette here, which is good. This this here is doing um, palette one and palette one, and then palette zero and palette one, um, which is this part of the screen, and that's. Uh, hmm, so then do we want to update that? No, I guess we do want to update that because then the next row, it's just those palette values don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Seven C, one, and three, and three, and zero. So we want to update this. So if we're stepping through, what does this say this is? This is still attribute buffer, right? Attribute buffer is 64 bytes, yes? Yeah. All right, so. Attribute mode is zero F, so we're gonna get this, the, the, Seven is going to go away, and we're going to get a new value. Yeah, so we get five. Uh, 
Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh yeah, no, no, that should be... Okay, I... Yes, I know what the problem is. Uh, we're in incrementing attribute index too many times because we want to increment attribute index every two times. Not every time because each 16 by 16 meta tile is one, one update to, okay. Um, do, do, do. So why? I think Y can be used to determine if we want to do the increment. So um, transfer A to uh, transfer Y to A, and it with one, um, not one O oh, one. And if we get zero, then we have a, a multiple of two, which means that we want to increment. Uh, no, if we have one, if it's not zero, yeah. So let's see. So what I'm saying is that, you know, we have this attribute index. Um, we're incrementing the Y value. Oh, but we're doing that more than one time. Damn it. Um, poop. We need to, what, divide it in half and then and it? Because it's going to go by every tile, not by every meta tile. And so then, yeah, so what we want to do is we want to shift it right. Um, to divide it by 2, because it's going to go from 0 to 32 which is the number of tiles, not the number of meta tiles. So we want to divide it in half. And then if it becomes a value of, um, if we end it by one and we get one, or we got get a non-zero value, then we know that we are about to go to the next meta tile um, and thus must, must increment the attribute index. So uh, branch is equal to skip that and there. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, it did not get better, but I think this will fix it. We're overwriting, we're writing past the memory of the attribute buffer because we're incrementing the attribute index too many times and that's no good. Um, all right, so let's see. Where are our breakpoints? I still want the breakpoints. I must have my breakpoints. Um, where is. Yeah, let's do that. Get rid of this. Add that. Let's start. So let's go back to our memory and we will essentially clear out these eight bytes. That's all we should do at this point. So this will become seven C, this will become five C and then five five, I believe.
I know it's gonna stay 5c because what well, because we're updating that twice again un unnecessarily but okay that's fine um, we might actually be able to avoid that now that I'm thinking about that but I don't really care about that so much right now and I want it just not to break the way it was okay so let's loop back around oh that's good it didn't completely destroy the attribute table this time so that's good let's see if we can continue that trend Come on. That was interesting. Is it stuck in the loop or something? So that's not exactly what I was hoping to see. too many every time. It looks like it's going back. <sighs> there are a couple of problems. All right, so let's take a look at this. So compare it to F0 and so if we're setting the lower nibble, branch of not equal to here, um, so we're setting lower nibble, so low the attribute index, subtract, set the carry and subtract 16 because we're going to be dealing with the upper nibble. The only thing that I'm not doing properly is that when I subtract the 16, um, compare it to if we have 0 and we subtract. Sixteen, we're going to get F zero because we looped around um, into the negatives branch, if not equal to this here. Keep doing that. Um, oh, boo. Um, skip. Uh, uh, what do I want to call this? Um, Branch to, we're doing a transition to new attribute buffer row, um, new attribute buffer row. So if it's not equal, we don't do this. Otherwise we're gonna set the carry, uh, clear the carry and add, um, 38 back to it, right? Because we want to start essentially back, or no, 64, yeah, 64. Start back at the beginning of the buffer, which we aren't doing right now. So that's that. And this one, it's subtracting 32. So let's see. So if we, in the starting case, we are at um, 38 and we're subtracting 16. And so we're going to get, oh, well, it's not actually, we want F8 because of the way that that works. So then we're going to add 64 to that. But that shouldn't matter. We should still 
Hmm. For starting at 38 and subtracting 16 every time. Oh, we're not doing it every time. We're first we're doing 16 and then we're doing 32. Ah oh, man, attributes. So the first time through, we've updated it once. For the lower half, so then we gotta go back. And then we gotta do the upper half. And then once we do that, we gotta go back 32 start on the lower half. So when we start off after loading the level, we're starting at 38, which is 38 hex, right? So that's 64 minus um, eight. And we're updating the upper nibble. So then we're gonna subtract 32. So then we want to subtract 32, not 60, not, um, not 16. Um, let's see. So let me think about this. So we've, we're updating this is the lower nibble update. So we then, oh, am I just doing this out of order for what, what's, okay, yeah. it's So it's out of order for what's actually happening in the code. In the code, we would be in this position where we're at zero F in the attribute mode, which is upper nibble. Yeah, so let's um, let's do this. So first of all, this is what the hell is the value there? F zero. So if it is lower nibble, all right. So then we don't need to do that. All right. Instead of hard coding that value, um, like we were doing before. All right. So compare it to upper nibble. Compare it to branch if not equal to new attribute buffer row. Um, so, oh, I actually think I have my logic reversed here because if we're in the upper nibble update, then we want to, oh wait, this is code we're not using anymore. Um, which I would like to get rid of soon. All right. So this is So if we're updating the lower nibble, then branch if not equal to the bottom 
which would mean we were at upper, which this is, okay. So yeah, so I reverse the condition here because if we are, okay, I'm just confusing myself here. What is going on? If we're if we're dealing with the we're preserving the upper nibble, so now we're wiping the lower nibble. Okay, regardless, if we're comparing it here, then that should go to this. If we're if we're dealing with the upper nibble, then we want to do this and subtract 32. That's that's it. That's the end. If we're dealing with the lower one, we want to subtract 16 and, and start over again. And when we start, I don't know why I get so confused. Well, I do know why I get so confused with this sometimes, but um, it's just annoying. Oh, why are we subtracting 16? It should be eight, shouldn't it? It should be eight. Um, and then, so if we're starting at 64, yeah. So if we're starting there and we, we go through and we update the lower nibble, we get to this and then we, the lower nibble, well, in the first condition where we do this, we wanna go back by 16 to this. And then we're gonna go plus eight and then we're gonna go minus eight and do it again and then we're gonna go plus eight and minus 16 okay so this is not supposed to be that it's supposed to be that um so when we're done with the upper nibble we're always subtracting 16 from that and so the wraparound condition Forget this part is going to be when we're dealing with the uppermost part of the screen and we say we subtract the 16 from it and we're going to have 0 minus 16 well it's going to be yeah it's going to be 8 minus 16 by the time we're done which is f8 compared to f8 um, branch if not equal to skip this part Otherwise, um, load A with load A with 38. Start over again, um, and then the only other part is we don't want to switch to the lower nibble because the bottom of the screen is the upper nibble. So uh, we're just we're done. Jump, skip, attributes. Because at that point. We're good if we if we if we branch around. Otherwise, we got to switch. If it's any other upper nibble, we got to switch to the lower nibble of the next row. Okay. <sighs> well, they're not magic numbers. They're um, they're actually meaningful because they're the masks of um, they're the mask of how we want to mask out part of the bite. Um, so I'm not just randomly arbitrarily deciding we have something called upper nibble or lower nibble it's actually programmatically useful to use those values as modes for the bit mask um, we're also using them to determine how the logic works it's not just like some people will use arbitrary values to determine something and and that is no good um, or just store those values and they have no meaning. Oh, before we, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, so using the label is obviously um, a lot more clear. Um, all right, so let's let's just see what happens after this. Well, let's, let's see what we do when we run through this. Uh, what? Okay, so we're not updating, we're just updating this, hopefully.
Yeah, okay, so we're just updating that. Oh, and this must be new tiles. Okay, cool. So that is looking fairly reasonable. incrementing these values and storing them there so if we okay so again oops I didn't mean to do that we're still still not right it seems but let's see <laughs> all right so it's alternating but in a really weird way No, I hate attributes. Um, it's interesting that it's stuck re-updating this over and over again as opposed to cycling through um, like it's supposed to that's the attribute buffer so it should be as we load through cycling and then it, it looks like it stops and it's just re-updating that over and over again um, one curious thing Did I reverse? Did I reverse? I may have. Um, thought I had it right, but let's see. No, I reversed it. Damn it. Okay. Well, that explains why that's happening. So this should be 0F. This should be F0. Because the top is on the bottom. I always do that too, right? Alright, so that explains why it was doing top, bottom, top, bottom. It's still not right, but maybe it will look a little bit less weird. Yeah, it's a little, a little less weird. Still not right, but now it's also still stuck updating the same buffer area. Is that what it's doing? All right, let's uh, let's see what I did wrong. Although, you know, it's funny, I, uh, I reversed these, but that's it's not technically the right way to do it. Um, I guess I should rename these as something more correct then. I'll fix that in a second. Uh, one, one problem at a time. Um, What is this doing? Uh, wait. 
Oh, okay, no, this is, okay, so, that's fine. So, um, no, I guess I should name this more correctly um, based on the fact that I reversed some things here. So, the left, okay, so this is the, the lower part is the, um, what are we going to call this? Top quad. It's not a, it's not a quadrant because it's really top, we'll call it top half. This is the, uh, no. attribute mode so compare it if we are dealing with let's see so if we're dealing with the bottom half So if we're dealing with the bottom half, then we don't have to shift it by four. Um, if we are dealing with the bottom, no, if we're dealing with the Dealing with the top half, that's when we want to see the problem is that it's the 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 naming and the logic behind it is kind of backwards in my mind, and then that's what's confusing me, right? So like the the top the top part of the attribute area. Right, is the lower lower significant part of the um, of the byte, right? So this part is the lower value part uh, compared to the this part, the, the bottom. And so if we start off, what we're starting off with is What we're starting off with is we're starting off at the bottom of the screen, which means that we're dealing with the lower half. I'm trying to think of better naming than that because it's confusing. That's referring to the lower half of the of the of the byte, but it's also the upper part of the attribute. Again, which confuses me because conceptually it seems backwards. Um, so if we're dealing with the bottom half of the byte here, then we don't need to do this shift because the bottom half, yeah. So, all right, so we do all that and then we come down here and if we're dealing with the top half, then we go to the new one, otherwise we are dealing with the bottom half, which means that we want to subtract 8 from the attribute index and start over by flipping to the bottom half. Uh, wait, what? Lower quad, higher bits, upper quad, lower bits. Um, so if we're updating the bottom of the, stop it, if we're updating the, this, we're in the lower half, which means that at that point, We want to subtract 32. 
So we start at, let's see here. This is why it took so long to get the attributes working in the first place, because this was a giant pain in the rear. Um, so we started at fifty-six decimal, and we update the bottom half of it, and then we are going to subtract sixteen, and then we're going to add eight. And subtract 8 again and then subtract 16 add 8 subtract 8 subtract 16 add 8 and okay so ultimately we're gonna end up with f8 here when we subtract the 16 um, and once we do that, we are back at the, oh Lord. Okay. Had we updated, I guess we would have updated that. That would have been the upper part. But when, when do we update zero? We don't ever update zero. Zero. Um, there's a flaw here in the logic. I'm trying to think through this. So the problem is we get to the point where we're at eight, which would update. Oh no, that would be because we'll be adding 8 and then subtracting 6, we get 0 plus 8 minus 8 and then subtract 16. Okay, so, all right, all right, that's, that's fine. And then we're at 38. So if we are at 38, then we are switching from bottom half back to upper half. And let's see. Up our name. Where did I do that? Twelve eighty nine. So let's see, so compare, oh, this is just, it's not even used right now. I just don't want to delete it necessarily. Or, oh wait, no, it is used. This is, um, compare, oh, no, it's not used. It's just a random compare. Metatonal attribute. I think this is just old code. Right, we're here. So, um, it's just that over there because it's uh, let's see so we're jump skip attributes otherwise we've gone here and we're jumping okay uh, 1336 finalize attribute updates what is this this is more old code yeah so it doesn't really matter what this is because it's not used anymore Okay. 
giant pain. Alright, at least it's updating the um, it's updating the attributes in maybe the right direction. Although it seems to be getting stuck here. Which is odd because it should be getting to the point where it goes here and it goes eight minus eight to zero, eight minus sixteen. That's right over here. So when we're here. We're subtracting 16, which would give us 8 minus 16, which is F. Oh, did I? I screwed that up again. It's not looping around. Um, actually, We have F8. And we end it against um, 63. And it gives us the value we want. Can we just do that? We subtract it and end it. And then it flips it back over. Uh, what's um, 63 is 3F. So if we take 8 minus 16, it's F8 and 3F gives us the value that we want. So that should work. So after the subtract, we can say and 3F just every time. And then we don't have to do that. Um, oh, but we do still need to know. Yeah, we still need to know if we, oh, that's no good. So it wasn't updating attribute index. That, that explains why it's not looping around. Okay. Let's see here. Right now I just want to have it continuously update the memory for the attribute buffer. I don't care if it's necessarily right yet. Yeah, there we go. So it's looping around now. Um, all right, so now the question is, why is it wrong? It seems like it should be... It's like it's partially... My, am I incorrect in my memory of the way that the palette information is stored? It's possible. Let's see. It seems to be consistent though, so that's that's good. Oh, is it off by one? It might be that. It might be that it has to be off by one because of palette. Um, because of the offset for the meta tile. The spacer that would explain why it yeah let's let's see that might be uh, let's see was I was I doing anything like that here Store A and temp. Oh yeah, it's ah because there is no meta tile zero, right? Okay. If 
forgot about that. So that's not that's not terrible. Okay, load A there. Um, we'll keep that, and then what we want to do is we want to. Um, um, what do I want to do? I want to compare temp, uh, no, branch of, not, branch of equal to this. Um, If the value is not zero, subtract one to offset for meta tile zero. Okay. That might mean that this is actually maybe okay ish. Possibly. not quite as bad. There's obviously something not right, but it is definitely less bad compared to what it was previously. So the question is... I mean, it's not, it's, there's obviously something wrong, but it's not necessarily completely off because we are ending up with the right tiles for the tile set that's shown there. So why, let's go back to the tile loading logic. So it's loading the meta tile here that needs to be displayed at this time. Okay, so there's also this whole other bit of logic related to the attribute index update, which, did I get rid of that? completely branch not equal looks like it doesn't call that anymore which may be part of the problem although So it's not calling that anymore, which is good. All right, so this was because we were, we had split our attribute updates into two parts, right? Because we were updating a meta tile one, the meta tiles one row at a time. And so Right now, when we update our attribute information, we're updating the entire, well, 16 by 16 is the lowest granularity that we can update anyway. So there's no, there's no benefit to only updating one row. We were doing two rows before, but now obviously that doesn't help us because we're still gonna have to update the attributes. 
but I think the problem is that we're updating the attributes at twice the speed of compared to the tile set because for the tiles we are we are updating one one row of the eight by eight and then moving on and then updating the next row of eight by eight and then moving on and doing the next row of eight by eight um and we were splitting up the attribute updates but now because we're doing well you know what i guess we don't we just don't have to update the attributes every time is what it really comes down to and we should be able to check that based on are we where are we checking for loading a new meta tile row here load a2 and put it into mtile y increment tile flag so if bit 0 is 1 So let's see, meta tile flag. So we only do this, let's see. Load a meta tile flag or a with one branch not uh, branch if equal to skip attribute update. Let's see, we pushed that on, so we want to jump to here. Uh, let's call this something a little bit different. Skip inline attribute update. So we only want to do this if we've loaded it, if we're transitioning into a new meta tile row and we only and we know we're doing that when we have meta tile flag incremented by one which would give us the value of three so that first bit is what tells us so that would explain why it's doing it at double the rate is that right let's see Still doing it. Uh, let's see. Is this math right? Let me, let's start getting rid of some of this crap. Um, load new row. Okay, so this is all to do with attribute stuff. And I have. Okay, so there's that. That that can go away. This can also go away. Um, compare it to two. Branch if not equal to check for meta tile row. Actually, what was it doing otherwise? Uh, compare to two for midway point in meta tile. Oh, that's for M tile Y so that we can update the uh, but that doesn't even make sense here anymore because yeah that doesn't even make sense in this particular case but uh, so it's just bringing us here m tile y Subtract number of tiles in meta row, meta tile row, in this case two, because it's two by two. Compare two for midway point. That's no longer relevant. Uh, compare to FE, so subtract the two from zero. Branch it equal to increment meta tile row, otherwise jump to new meta, load new row. So this is a new meta tile row that we're going to store 
m tile y with two, and then you've run meta tile flag, load that, so uh, subtract number of meta tiles in a row. There are 16 meta tiles in a row. Sort into row mem, branch carry set to there. Okay. Um, oh, oops, what did I do? I broke this uh, by doing that. So hoop. Push A onto the stack for later. Load a metal flag. So we're just, that's also, that was also broken because we were not um, doing the subtract anymore because I had loaded the meta tile flag to check if we were supposed to even do the uh, attribute update and yeah, so then we had the wrong palette values. So let's go back to this for a second and see if that yields a slightly better result, possibly. Uh, I don't need this anymore. All right, so the the result is not quite as totally wrong, although this is not freaking loading now. Um, Is this not incrementing to the next? Load A2 store AM tile Y. What was it that I removed that I said didn't make sense and then now it's not working? Oh, it does need that, um, that store, doesn't it? After the subtract. Because otherwise, it didn't do anything. All right. So that probably is what caused that. All right, so it's loading the tiles again correctly. Um, so it's weird. It's like it's it's updating at twice the speed it should, and it's also not updating. It's like a, it's almost updating all the attributes with all the same values in the block on top of it because it still seems to be like in the same rough shape as this at a diagonal but it's updating the entire 16 by 6 yeah see like this is 
it's not 100% wrong because if you, I mean, it's not right either, obviously, but like if you look at the, the values that we, what we're storing here is so the bumper value is the white palette and it has the C palette here. Um, let's see. So, First and foremost, why is it updating at twice the rate of the scroll? It should only be updating. Uh, skip inline. So or a. So love the metatile flag if the value is one. Or if the, yeah, if we or it against, the, oh no 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 you dummy, and it against that. Of course, it's always gonna. Uh, I wanted to and it against one to see if that bit is set, not or it against one, and always then have it be set. Somehow that made it worse. Uh, and against one increment. So it starts at two, and then it subtracts two, and you get zero, and then it subtracts two, and you get FE, which brings you back to two. Um, this is increment metatal row, which is the only time we need to update the attributes. Store the M tau Y increment metatal flags so that we have bit one set. So it's bit two. I don't think anything sets bit two anymore. Oh, it, uh, load new row. Branch of equal to that. So this is just loading the row. Um, right, okay, yeah, that's fine. So load the row memory, stored into temp, which we then later reuse here, but that's fine. Push this onto the stack for later. Load the metatile flag and end it with one. And if it's equal, we've jumped to a new metatile row. Or no, and then we, we, we haven't, so we skip. Um, otherwise, we load temp and we... Um, new metatile row. Did I jump too far? No. We've pushed the value on, so we want to pull our metatile value back off and transfer that to X and do the lookup and all that other stuff that we usually do. Oh, the tile counter, blah, blah, blah. This is all fine. Step through this. I thought for sure I would have uh, gotten this solved by now, but something's still not quite right. Let's see. Alright, so let's take a look. 
take a look at some of the assumptions I'm making here. So, metal flag is, so we, we're loading a new metatile row. I guess we are because we're it's the first time through. So we're going to load temp, which I assume is, yeah, okay. So branch of equal, otherwise we're going to subtract one. Start back in temp and do all that other nonsense. And we're at the top of the screen. So, right, so we are updating. Uh, right. Um, yeah, so that's fine. And then we're going to load our masked off value because started there at 7C, 7-0, and then we divide Oh, what am I shifting right? That doesn't make sense. Um, I wanted to do that for X or Y. What do I want? What was I trying to do the divide by? I was trying to do that for the Y value and I totally botched that, right? So um, that should be doing a transfer Y to A before we do the logical shift right. Skip that step, right? Because at this point, we're, we know what the value of. Wait. <laughs> I'm dividing and then transferring. That's what I, I should have been the other way around. It should be transferring Y to A and then shifting right. And then that'll determine whether or not we need to increment the attribute index. Some crash on me here. Let's uh, we'll just close it. It happens very infrequently, but it happens. All right, there's the debugger. Let's get rid of this. Um, what did I say? The um, yeah. So that's our breakpoint. and branching uh, yep doing our store and our bottom half updates and then we're transferring Y to A and then we're going to shift and 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 okay so that is now I think more correct Updated, that updated the scroll. <laughs> okay. That updated my scroll register for the X for some reason. Um, man, all right.
I'm just getting rid of this because that's all old code. It's not referenced anymore. Um, all right. So, let's look at this for a second here. We're not doing the inline attribute update <clears throat> if we didn't load a new um, metatile row, which is fine. When we are, then we're checking to see if Y is a multiple of y divided by 2 is a multiple of 2 and that's because we update two tiles at a time for one half of the meta tile and we only need to update the attribute index once for every meta tile which is every two every two tiles so If we have a value of, let's say the value of the y index is 2, and we divide by 2, we get 1. And then when we end it, we know we have a value of 1. But I'm thinking that may be wrong. If we divide by two, you know what? We don't actually need to divide by two. I think we just need to check for the alternating because, because dividing by two is actually messing up the, the, the and here. I think that's, that was the correct change to make there. Or not. This is, I mean, this is, it looks like it's just going to take me stepping through laboriously one by one and seeing why, why this is not working. I don't know if they have the energy for that right now. Let's, uh, let's try this. So our value is zero. The attribute index is 38. We're getting our value of 7C and we want to update the value by masking out the bottom part because it's the top part of the meta tile or the top part of the attribute, which is what's actually visible. And then we're going to store that into temp2, and then we're going to load the attribute mode. And if we're dealing with the bottom half of If the bottom half is masked out, then we don't need to shift. We only need to shift if we're masking out the top half. Um, and then we load out, load up the value of temp2, and we or it with temp, which was zero. And we store it into attribute buffer x, and then we transfer y to a, and we and, and if it's equal, Right. 
So we didn't we didn't update attribute index to by to increment it because there's no point because we're coming back to it for the next meta tile uh, portion that we're updating. So here's where we're actually updating the tiles. So we incremented y. Uh, only by one, even though load a minute tells x store a. Oh, tile counter is that the problem? That could be why. Um, I forgot that we were doing that. So, that could be, so let's do load a tile counter. Uh, let's see, so if we load tile counter, which we're then using here and we're incrementing it by two, because we're loading it into Y and then we're incrementing y twice and storing it. Get index off of romem back. Yeah. So there's that. And then transfer a to y. Incre oh, wait. Push meta. File index into romam on hmm oh okay yeah so tile count that that explains so tile counter is what we wanted to use we're not messing with y anywhere here so that's good. Um, because that would be, that would be a problem. Um, all right. So tile counter gets incremented. Twice. So it's going to be a value of zero, two, four, eight. So I was partially right in that. Okay. Yeah. So we do want to do that logical shift right, but we the reason it wasn't working was because of tile uh, using Y not tile counter. I believe. We didn't increment attribute index that time. We'll come through around. Tile counter will be incremented to two. Yeah. And so then the next time around, where we're doing the next set of meta tiles, and we're basically just re updating the thing to the same value. At this point, we're going to actually increment the attribute index. So that looks better, at least from stepping through it. So let's see what that looks like in the code, in the actual updates here. No, this still looks freaking wrong. Um, really?
So this is all the same stuff. The only thing that's different is the attribute index is going to be incremented by one. So basically attribute index, by the time we get to this, the attribute index should have incremented to 64, which is correct. That's the attribute mode. So bottom half, it's currently set to, yes, it's currently set to bottom half. And the attribute index, okay, so that means we're done with updating the top part of the attribute or the lower half of the byte. So we're done with that row of bytes, so we want to subtract from it not 8, but 16. So that's what we're doing. We're loading that. We're subtracting 16. Comparing F8, it's not equal. Restoring, restoring the attribute index, loading the attribute mode, flipping the mode. Because now we want to update the upper four bits, and we're going to store that, and we're done. So now when we flip back around, skip right because we don't need to update the attributes again uh, oh so then we don't we also don't have to flip the attribute mode that's why okay so that that also is part of the reason why it looks like it's updating at a faster rate so load a attribute flag uh, what is it um, is it attribute flag or uh, meta tile flag? Um, and one branch not equal. No. Um, and against one and then branch if equal, which means we didn't load a new meta tile row to Skip attributes because we're done. Right, if we end one against it and we get zero, then that should be that. We don't need to make that switch every time. We only need to do it when we actually load a new attribute table, um, new attribute, um, new meta tile row, which needs the new attributes. Whew, okay. Um, So in this case, we did need to do that update because it was the first time through and we were loading the new attribute table row. And that is looking like it should. This time through, we don't need to do the inline update. So we just do our tile set update and then we check that here also and because we're done we're done okay um, that's apparently not a hundred percent correct but let's just see how this goes here so now we are updating another okay so we're doing another meta tile row so now we've switched so we're shifting and we get our new value and we don't need to update that and then we go through and update the tiles and now let's see so same thing we're still doing this so we do our shift
and then we are loading A with temp2 and oring that with that, and we get four, and then we're storing that. And then we're loading the tile counter, which is two, so now we want to update the next index there. Okay, so now we're here, and we did load a new attribute table. Uh, I keep saying that, a new meta tile row for the attributes. So now look at what we're doing. Load attribute index, which is 38, and only subtract eight because we Okay, yeah, because we, we only updated the first half of the byte. And now switch modes. So the next time through, now let's look at this and say, okay, so now we're doing another change to the attributes, but this time we're doing the other part of it. Okay, so something is wrong with the way that we're doing it, but this is actually more correct than it has been up until this point. And you can see that it's partially updating it correctly, but not completely correctly, but damned if that's not close. It's really close. Um, okay, so the question is why is it off? Um, and you can see in the map <clears throat> that it looks like oh is it revert uh, it's it's just off uh one two three, four, five, six, this is, that's, mm, that's weird. Is it, oh, because tiled is, okay. Sorry, scrolling, right. Okay, I don't feel so bad now. Um, that actually looks, one, two, three, four. So it's just why it's only doing it in so this meta tile and this meta tile and this. And then this, it's doing it in. The same sets of two. Oh. Hmm. So for each one. Oh, is it because it's using? Well, it shouldn't matter. It, if anything, it's let's think about this for a second here. It's a sixteen, and that's a sixteen. So that's a six. What is what's a six? This is a sixteen, right? That's 16, that's 16, that's 16, that's 16. That's one part of one byte, that's part of one byte, right? Because this is two, 
and that's two, and that's two, and then, so it's not transitioning between them cleanly or correctly. So if there are two different meta tiles, if there are two different meta tiles, it's not, it's choosing one of the two values and that and not updating how would it do that though oh maybe because no because it would be updating the first if we look at the ppu We just restart this for a second here. We should be able to see that it's updating again one one row of eight by eight at a time, which is fine. It's what we want it to do, right? Uh, I can't tell if I'm correct or not. What is it showing me? Show attribute grid. Highlight, oh, I just wanna see tile updates, not the attribute update. So um, I'll get back to that in a second, but. Um, should just be updating. Yeah, it's just updating one eight by eight row at a time. But the attributes are updating. Incorrectly. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. So, we go through here and we're scrolling up, drawing this bottom, well we're starting with, let's just say, let's just say for sake of argument, we're starting with this. That's the top part of the bite, but it seems like it's messing that up by updating the bite with the same palette. As the next meta tile. Why is that? <sighs> because what? Because so here it's iterating over the meta tile values one by one and then let's see each of those meta tile values represents four bits in the attribute which is what I thought it was updating. Because we're taking the value and we're each meta tile only, yeah. Man, I'm so close here. Uh, 
the hell am I doing wrong? Well, so if the granularity of the map allows for these to be different meta tiles, then the granularity of the attributes table would allow for them to have different palettes. And right now, oh, is that the problem? I'm updating it to I wonder if that's the problem. I think I'm I think what's happening is I'm updating I have to alternate between the upper yeah, that's what it is. So here, if I take this out, we'll see a slightly different result, but I'll explain it in a second. And then that should fix it. If I get that um, doing what it's supposed to, I know what I'm doing wrong here. So let me just speed up the emulation, please. So it's, it's still wrong, but you can see that it's off by a meta tile rather than being completely wrong and or partially anyway so what's happening is i was taking the value and shifting it and then reoring it with itself and that's not right because depending on depending on what we have to we have to for each meta tile value, so for each increment of y, we need to store in either the, we gotta start with the lower two bits and then the, the higher two bits. And right now I'm forcing everything into, the same value into both parts. So, uh, let's see. Depending on what Y's value is, we'll de determine if we need to shift by two or not. So, store A into temp. Then if we need to shift it, oh, it's not exactly. not exactly right okay there's some further nonsense that has to happen here so so what's happening is I'm bludgeoning for lack of a better word this is our one attribute this is one meta tile there's another meta tile, there's another meta tile, there's another meta tile. What I'm doing is I'm taking this value of the meta tile, which has is maps to directly to our palette value, and I'm storing it if this is our byte. 
Um, if we're starting at the bottom, I'm storing, this is metatile one, and this is metatile two, and this is three, and this is four. Starting here, I'm just saying, this is the value of metatile one and metatile one, and then go to this one, and I say it's the value of metatile two, metatile two, and then we go on to the next part of that afterwards when we're updating the upper part, and then I do the same thing. I say this is M3, M3, and then this is M4, M4. So it's only, it's, it's incorrectly updating the attribute buffer, which means that we need to take the value that was in the attribute buffer before and depending on why, get what the previous value was and or it onto the t value of temp, which will have been shifted accordingly. All right, so transfer y to a, because we need to actually look at that. And then if y is kind of do the same thing. If we say, if we're at a point where y is an odd number, then what do we want to do? We want to shift We want to shift temp to the upper upper part. We want to shift that twice. So um, branch if equal to this. So um, so that's that. Because at that point we say, okay, we're we're updating the, the two bits, the upper two bits of the nibble. And then I want to load A with attribute buffer at X. And again, depending on the value of Y, well, mm, is it better to do it here? Because then we're all, it's all encapsulated here. So we load that value and then uh, the only thing we care about is the first two bits, which is gives us the value of three to and against. And then we or a temp. that is actually our value, right? Oh, no, then we need to take the rest of, ugh, okay. Um, <laughs> this is nuts. And this is what I was trying to avoid by doing 32 by 32 attributes. Uh, sorry, 32 by 32 meta tiles because you don't have to do these partial byte and nibble updates the same way. It's a lot simpler. Um, and it's almost midnight. Okay. Let's see if I can finish this here without writing code. That's too awful. Um, so we shift by two, we load the previous value, we and it so that we only have the lower bits, we or it, and then let's store that back into temp. And then we jump to, let's jump to uh, attribute buffer update. So let's get rid of this and then I guess I gotta do that here right 
Um, this is attribute buffer update. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to leave temp alone. Then uh, we don't want to shift it. We want to load x attribute index. We want to load a attribute buffer x. Um, and then we want to end it with um, the upper nibble. Uh, what is that? So the first two bits give you one, two, is so four and eight, so 12. Oh, but this only works if we're dealing with the bottom half. No. Oh. If we're dealing with the top half. Then we have to, sh oh man, all right. This is yucky. I don't like this. I'm trying to think of what's a good way to Trying to think of what's a good way to prepare the value that we need. Because Oh, okay, what we can do is It's not going to work either. I was going to say we could use our mask that we're using, the bit mask, to, um, and we can. We can use it to isolate the, the portion of the byte that we want, but that still doesn't solve the rest of this crap. Um, Think about this more here and get rid of this because that's not really that's not going to really work so well so what we want to do Take whatever the existing value is at the time. And apply it to... See, this would be less problematic if we were updating the full... 32 by 32, even with these 16 by 16 meta tiles, but then that shows up more visibly on the screen. Oh, let's see. Because it really comes down to, are we updating the bottom half portion or the top half portion, first of all? I think if we're updating 
Let me think about that. So if we're updating the bottom half portion of it, then we want to get the top half portion of the... Well, there's two parts. There's which part of the four bits are we updating? Yeah, you know, I wonder if we can... I can save myself some headache. That might work. So, instead of trying to do it each time, we do an update of the tiles. What we can potentially do is, and of course the order is wrong for doing this, but we could, um, Take what the first value would be for the meta tile palette the first time through, and then shift it by two. And then take the second value, and then it's out of order because of this the whole thing being backwards where left is lower and right is higher. Um, all right, so, but then if we reverse the nibble at the, we reverse those bits, somehow, then that would give us our value to store before we do the attribute index increment. That might be the simplest way to do that. So like we take this value, we store it in temp, and if, we're, if it's time to update the attributes, then we're going to load that back in and subtract one from it. And then, um, so that's an A. And then, let's see, and then we store that maybe in That might work, wait a minute, let's do that. So, so if we store that into temp, hmm. Well, if we store that into temp, then that's part of the way there. And if we're not incrementing right, that gives us part of the value. And then I don't actually care about this part yet because I want to do that here before we increment the attribute index. So I kind of want to just like move this all here into this part and say, store that into temp, load the tile counter. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't work a hundred percent because we're reusing that. Um, what could we do? Based on Y, how big is temp? Temp is just one byte, I think. do this. 
Oh, we have temp word. Okay, yeah, temp word sounds like what I want to use. So we're going to store this into temp word, comma. This to just go into either zero or one and then use that to recombine it into the nibble that we then either shift or don't so if we're loading row my with this if we that's going to increment from zero to 16, um, transfer Y to A, and it with one so that we get either zero or one, which is what I want. Um, and then transfer A to X, which may not be a good thing. Thing and oh, that's okay because we are okay. Yeah, so that's that's okay to do here. So that gives us the value in either temp word zero or temp word one. And then we're loading the tile counter. We're shifting right. We're determining if it's time to increment the index. And if it is, we're going to take the current index value. We're going to take the current value of attribute buffer x. And we're going to end it against the attribute mode. And then we're going to store that into temp. Okay. And then we're going to attempt to recompose those two bytes that we stored in temp word in as um, a single byte. So what we're going to do is we're going to load A with... And we just got to think about this first. So we're doing left to right instead of the way that it wants it in. Right, so we're loading temp word and then um, actually let's put that into temp2 like we were doing originally. So and then we're going to store that into temp2 temp and then we are going to load x with one. We're gonna load, oh, actually no, I don't need to do that. Load a with temp word plus one. And then I want to shift that twice. And then I want to or that with temp. And then I wanna store that back into temp. So, um, load left nibble store into temp our final destination um, load right nibble shift into position or a temp so that we get a full nibble. Oh, this is actually left. Uh, it's not even left nibble, it's left two bits. Two bits. Um, so we get the full nibble and then store that into temp for full. Um, okay, store that into temp, it's ready. And then we're gonna take the attribute mode and we're gonna compare it if it's bottom half, um, if it is then we don't have to do anything because we have to shift it otherwise we're going to shift it by four and we're going to load temp2 which are is our masked value from attribute buffer and then or that against temp correctly and then store that back into attribute buffer oh this should be load x 
into attribute buffer X and then increment attribute index. So we're only incrementing it once we've updated the full nibble. I think maybe, hopefully that's right. I'm, I'm very done with this. Um, what is this? This is nothing. I don't need that anymore. Um, oh, yes, I do. Uh, well, I don't need it as it was. Uh, branch of equal skip uh, attrib inline attribute um, right. We'll call it because we are updating it. We're just not. Writing it. Okay. That's what that warning was at the 119 uh, or 1119 was a label that I wasn't using anymore, which was an immediate signal that something was potentially wrong. Oh, did I open? Oh, it just reopened. Good. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Um, balls. Uh, okay. So now it's just basically what re updating the same thing over and over again. Let's see. So skip inline attribute of meta. Okay, so yeah. Because we don't have to do it. Otherwise, load that value. Branch if equal. Transfer y to a. And it with that. Transfer A to X and store and temp word and then load tile counter and determine if we need to actually increment. If we don't, we skip that. Otherwise, we load the X, we get the buffer, we do all this. Um, find y anywhere so where why is the attribute index not incrementing oh it is uh, except that's weird why is that yielding if those are the same bytes then why is it yielding uh, okay yeah no that, that makes sense Am I just doing something wrong now with this whole temp word thing? <clears throat> I wonder if it's not working the way that I expect it to for some reason. 
let's see, so x is 0, temp word, <clears throat> got updated to 0, the word is 0, so it's not doing the update again, and then x in this point should be 1, and it is, so temp word is now 0, 0, and 0, 1. <clears throat> and now it's going to do the update. So load the attribute index and get the buffer value. <clears throat> load the mode, or and it against the mode. Store that into temp2. So load temp word should be 0. Store that into temp. And then load a temp word plus one, which is one, and shift it. And then, is that right? Doesn't seem right. Why was temp, hmm. First value is one, which means that the value that it's getting for the palette is zero. And then on the next update where y will be one, the value of it is three. No, value is one. And then we're gonna take Y and check to see. Yep, and then we're gonna X is that, so Y oh Damn it. Oh, dummy. Um, okay. That's because it's storing the result of the end, not the thing that it's supposed to be. Store that back into temp. Then transfer Y and transfer A to X. And load A with temp, and then store that. That should, that's why it was doing that alternating sort of stripey pattern, because it was reflecting the status of the alternating variable and not the actual meta tiles. Let's see how that looks. Just, I just want to see what that looks like. I don't need to step through it quite yet. And there we go. <sighs> Can we just all agree that we're never going to update the way the meta tiles work again? <laughs> Let's see how the rest of this looks as it loads, because so far, so good. Hey, that looks right. 
So now my crappy map is actually loading properly with the proper attributes. So now we got to figure out why my crappy enemies aren't... Well, actually, the, the enemies look decent. They just don't do much yet. i to figure out why those are not um, loading properly. So... Let's do this. Let's uh, see what happens if we bring this back in. Also probably should figure out why the player immediately dies. It's interesting that the enemies are no longer randomly spawning. I guess that was some sort of buffer overrun. Looks like they may actually spawn properly now. Hey, there we go. That looks right. Okay, cool. So the enemies weren't broken. And the sprite spawning wasn't broken. It was just the, um, it was the, um, uh, there was some sort of issue with the memory being over overridden incorrectly, causing the sprites to be spawned. Yeah, yeah, ben Bonchiku, you're absolutely right. It's probably the collision data is wrong for the backgrounds now. Um, but we will leave that for another day because it is, well, we certainly went out with a bang. Um, three hour recording for the, uh, for this session, but we got it working. So that's cool. Um, so as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Clarivus. I'm also a Nintendo age as Zelius. And uh, you can watch the recording of this on YouTube. And uh, like I said, I'll start doing more development uh, on, uh, on just recordings and post those on YouTube and then stream once a week on Thursdays where we can talk about questions you have from the videos or NES programming or programming in general. Um, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next live stream.